Was says Sagittarius? Was sail? So, uh, yeah, I was going to say emergency. Uh, I was going to say sorry for the delay in your ear, but Capricorns had me stuck and I couldn't skip them. And I kept going to various temples and things to do the ancient energy reading and I kept being stopped. But I'm doing now glimpses ahead at 2023. So what do we need to look at? Um, the important thing is that as this energy starts, so remember this is the year that um, Pluto will finally move from having been since 2008 in Capricorn, causing a bit of a problem, um, to moving finally into Aquarius. And then it pops out, pops back in, pops out, pops back in over the next two years, but it eventually gets there and stays over 20 years. But on midnight, GMT, um, on the 1st of January, there is a conjunction between Venus and Pluto. And I've been picking up that energy for a couple of years since I was in Lisbon. For you, what's interesting is you've actually also got the instigator of a whole kind of story, um, Eros, at nine degrees in your sign. So Pluto and Venus are in conjunction at 27 degrees and you've got Eros who shot the arrow at Pluto and he fell for Persephone instead of Venus, Aphrodite. So let's do your bells. Uh, it's going to be a busy year, a noisy year <laughs> for you, I think. So let's go with the bells. this immediate energy of the embrace and the warmth of love. Like it's your secret power for a year, at least. 2023 has got the energy, um, I wanted to say, of like matchmaking or being matchmade or matchmaking for others. So, I'm gonna throw some runes. Not the new, oh, look, hail and weathering. And, and we've all been weathering a lot <laughs> in the last couple of years. So, I wanna do Pluto, Venus, and Eros. It seems to matter that you've got the maker. Oh, he's two tarot. It's your power for sure. But let's see what the cards say. See what the runes can add. So, Pluto for the centaurs. Pluto for the centaurs. And it came out. Pluto's had you weathering. Oh, nine degrees weathering. Emotion loving difficulties. It's had you, it's had your love being tested. <clears throat> and then we have Flursa. Pluto will make it flow. Nine and 13. A divine inspirational energy. Interesting. Venus, what's Venus? What's Venus got? Oh, that's a lot, Venus. Venus is dealing with health, your biome. Oh, Ophelagoo, a new energy cape, cloak, mantle. Bliss, 
comfort. Of the self, you. That's such beautiful energy. She's bringing in healer frequency on all the love that didn't flow. No. Love is the interface. Love, the biome is the interface between the physical and the conscious. The consciousness, our consciousness frequency. Um, it's bringing in some kind of connection through the heart to the sacral. This is really a powerful, joyful link into a part of your... It feels physical, like love will enter into your physical being. Eros has also got a lot. The scent, he's the test. He fires the arrow and Venus embraces and gives the energetic clothing, renews the energy. Blood scented, knowing Eros knows what it's hunting. It's hunting you so that you can it's like being given the chance, this new superpower of being a lover is the power that's coming through. It's got leaf shade. That's that comfort blanket of love wrapping you up in the world. And then you wrapping yourself up in, in humanity, but like your love will shine to humanity. That's what we get in there. That's beautiful energy. I don't have any Sagittarius. I want some. <laughs> well, obviously, Sagittarius is a numbered house in my birth chart, and it might not have planets in, but it doesn't mean I can't connect. Anyone, all of us, can't connect with these energies. I feel like I need to do the alchemy of astrology next. Interesting Capricorns on the bottom. And that's where I was in the last reading. So, Santaurus, Sagittarian Centaurus. What would you like to say, alchemy of astrology? <clears throat> moon. The moon is at three degrees in Taurus as the year begins. Love is an emotion. Love, there's something here about you being because this, you've got this Eros superpower that begins. This loving ability to shoot arrows of love into the world. It's like you're shooting at the shadows that others keep by your very presence. It's not like you have to rattle them. You just have to move into you. Sagittarius, just moving into you. So we have rusted. This is like the patina, the aged frequency that masks and chokes others. It doesn't feel like it's you. It feels like what will awaken in you because your new super energy is firing the arrows of Eros out, radiating with love, that's the energy. It's like you're going to be awakened, you're going to notice, you're going to witness that kind of grasping possessiveness 
of others and the world around you, awakening to that distortion. And then you've got Moon in Gemini, which is about, it's like a form of individualism. There's an energy of, I want to say a divine selfishness. It's like the year as it unfolds for you, Sagittarius, is trying to teach you to stand in your loving light. And that will release anxiety. Um, it will heal you. It's this connection, this biome. Love is the interface. I'm just going to say that again because that's what I'm being shown. Digging deep in your mind to put love into every cell of your being. Being, it's like love, this blood-scented kanafa energy is, is love coursing through your blood. You are turning into, you know, a frequency of being, being the hero Eros somehow. And remember Eros originally before he became the son of Aphrodite and then the Cupid of Venus, he was the original love frequency. He was one of the, he was the fourth primordial frequency on earth that created life. And that's this, that's what's gonna start to course and embrace Every cell in your body, Sagittarius, it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful energy. So Quicksilver, that was also in Capricorn, the mutable energy of your fires. But this is, this is again, I'm seeing sort of like love as this shiny silver glowing energy pouring through, coursing through your veins transforming, shedding, bringing all kinds of, hey, and there you are. You are running with erotic playfulness. <laughs> this is healing sexual wounds. This is Purifying the pains of love, filtering, filtering the another, filtering the wounds, Chiron. Chiron's at about 15 or 16 degrees, oh, 11, sorry. 11 of Aries. It's like that need to renew. This is Chiron healed. This is not Chiron, the wounded healer. This is healing the wounds. And then you have cardinal modality. We're in Capricorn when this year begins. We're also going into a year where zeros become important. New beginnings become important. And you've got moon in Cancer, healing the sacral. And you can only heal the sacral by working with love as the interface in your body. You're, you're raging with love. <laughs> I want to be raging with love. <laughs> so yeah, it's just like the spirit of love is like a comfort blanket coursing through your cells, through your aura, shining out like a lighthouse beacon to others. You are love, baby. <laughs> How beautiful. It's a new beginning, zero frequency. This is, this is the moment. Let love drown in love. 
drown in love because it's going to be a beautiful, wonderful, sacred energy. So you've got the Seven of Swords in reverse, and that's this fixed moon in Aquarius. And we began with the moon, moon in Gemini, moon in Cancer. So you've got fixed and you've got cardinal emotions. Unfix the cardinal emotions. Leave behind that fixed energy. Be empowered by your mutability of passion. And then you've got this frequency. Yes, it's the hermit. But it's talking about this Ganesh breaking through the barriers, shining. I, I can't help it, but that's got the energy of Wonder Woman. And Wonder Woman, her secret power is love. That's what she has that is her special additional power. And that's what you've got this coming year, Sagittarius. So, what do you have here? A lot of fire. This is your style, five to four. There's something in this energy of coming into your own, bringing passion back home. That's this energy of Eros. You, you hold the arrows of love inside every cell. Queen of fire. You are, that is your energy. To be overwhelmed with passion, to be able to express passionate truths to others. Six of coins, bringing it into the now this year. Being the one that wants to talk about sex, passion. It's almost like you're becoming you're becoming more Scorpion, Scorpio, but in a completely mutable way where you're showing the fluidity of love and passion. And then that ability to cut away, to cut into the earth, to cut into, whoa, it's kind of like to cut, sever the ties that kept you inside and being shown retreating into a house, retreating into yourself. That energy ends. Ganesh, the remover of obstacles, comes out and triggers a new, mm, it's that moon in Gemini area, that individualism, but actually it's like cutting away anxiety. That's the best way I can describe it. Being freed from anxiety. Sagittarius. It's got a little bit of spillage in my lap. So another energy of take your time. That was, in, um, that was in Capricorn as well. There's no rush on this energy this year. It's not like it's being promised and then you're like, when's it coming, when's it coming, when's it coming? Just take your time. Allow it to come in its own time. So you've got fortitude, strength. There's something about breaking that. This is again like the column that holds up your anxieties. You have the power to break through. And then the restrictions of Pluto having been, has been quite powerfully suppressive on your loving frequencies since 2008. It's bringing the change since 2008 and here comes i love this card because this is a card of how we clothe ourselves in anxieties 
But what I love in this card is, is that this king, when he turns up, he didn't break free and he's trying to point to something really profound that's coming towards you. A sense of balance, a sense of justice, a sense of coming into you, like scooping all your anxieties into one side of justice's balance and thinking it's going to tip it up and actually discovering that the love that's now pouring into the other side is keeping the balance on this frequency, helping you to free yourself from anxieties. Yeah, so they were just saying to me, notice, which is interesting, notice. They said, notice that this is not Sagittarius. Notice that this is Sagittarius. Notice that this, that's just come out, that's how it came. It said, notice that this is true Sagittarian energy. And it's fire, more than anything, this is you, the Knight of Wands. Moving, and it's interesting, into this, walking, passing over the heartache, moving past the heartache, and the very next card, oh my God, is love. You are Eros, you are love, two of cups. You are the instigator, you are loved, you, you give love, you show love, you demonstrate love. And then we've got the hermit again, this hermit and this hermit, nine, nine. You're in a process of something that's about to transform. You're one segment away. What's the segment? Love, it's coming to you. But this one talks about it's the divine timing now to move everything in your world past heartache by transforming it through love. And then we have over the five of wands, we have this eight of pentacles, which is mastery over your own element your mutable fire it's like before it could go either way you could kind of fall into the volcanic tear and feel burnt by it but now you have the ability to control the fires of passion it's wonderful wonderful it's so powerful, it's so loving. I think this is gorgeous energy, Sagittarius. This is more like what you were meant to be, how you were meant to be. But when we were in Earth energy for 200 years, Earth puts out passion and fire. This is about being overwhelmed with love. There's so much energy here of love being your riches. Love being the thing that balances you. Love being the thing that catapults you towards a future that's just so lovely, so comforting, so warm. It's gorgeous. So, I'm going to move some of my natal planets into Sagittarius. <laughs> so, I, that's really interesting. Right at the very end there, they've just said to me, if you have ancestors who were born in Sagittarius, it might be worth looking at their current transits, even if they're dead, because they're bringing some kind of Sagittarian arrows of love 
into your world. That's interesting. Anyway, that's ancestors for you. <laughs> so, have a beautiful day, Sagittarius. And don't forget, you can heal all wounds of love, all sexual wounds. In the coming year, you're going to feel blessed with love. You are love. You're bringing it forwards. It's gorgeous. I say, beautiful Sagittarius.